so now hello friends in this video we are going to start with neoplasia so new means new and plasia means growth so neoplasia is new growth and here the cells will arise from a single cell okay which has mutated which has been mutated and give rise to a mutated clone of cells so the one cell which has gone mutated and that same cell which has mutated will give rise to a number of cells which is the clone cloning of that cells is occurring clear so the population will be known as monoclonal population of cells if one uh, if cells are arising from the same mutated cell that is known as monoclonal population of cell but in normal condition normal cells are polyclonal but neo in cells of neoplasia are monoclonal now all tumors are neoplasms we use uh, today tumors and neoplasm as synonymous word okay and these are divided into two types benign and malignant malignant is generally known as cancer now all tumors have two components the first one is tumor cell and the second one is stroma tumor cells means parenchyma okay and a stroma that is reactive and a stroma is just blood vessels fibroblasts connected tissue okay which uh, support the growing tumor so, stroma is just for supporting the growing tumor okay so if a stroma is destroyed then tumor cells cannot derive its nutrition and hence they will die clear now coming to the nomenclature in neoplasia so you we use suffix oma for benign usually it is used for benign type of neoplasia okay and this uh, usually refer to mesenchymal that is fibroma lipoma chondroma but it can be used for others also such as hepatoma and adenoma clear now malignant counter parts of ever will be so here uh, benign part is fibroma but uh, when used for malignant then it is known as fibrosarcoma lipoma here known as liposarcoma chondroma here known as chondrosarcoma clear hepatoma here known as hepatocellular carcinoma here adenoma head will be known as adenocarcinoma now carcinoma is especially for epithelial malignancy this carcinoma term is used especially for epithelial malignancy and this sarcoma term is used for mesenchymal malignancy clear now moving to the next part that is your adenoma some few terms we will look for adenoma so this is benign epithelial tumor with or without gland formation papilloma is same benign epithelial tumor but in the form of finger like projection so papilloma is associated with finger like projection adenoma with, with or without gland formation the next one is cyst adenoma this is benign epithelial tumor with cyst like species the next one is polyp so any benign or malignant with exophytic growth exophytic means growing outward projecting out clear and if it has epithelial gland tissue then it will known as adenomatous polyp if polyp is formed in polyp form has epithelial glandular tissue then it will be known as adenomatous polyp clear so four term adenoma papilloma cyst adenoma and polyp now coming to the malignancy so first we will come for the carcinoma that is same which we have discussed here carcinoma epithelial malignancy so carcinoma may be squamous cell carcinoma that may be adenocarcinoma that may be papillary carcinoma okay clear sarcoma same like liposarcoma angiosarcoma osteosarcoma chondrosarcoma fibrosarcoma clear now two terms that is lymphoma and leukemia so lymphoma is tumor of lymphocyte and leukemia is tumor of white white blood cells clear means and these two are just tumor blood cells in blood yeah. these are neoplasia but they are neither carcinoma nor sarcoma these are lymphoma and leukemia are both are neoplasia but they are neither carcinoma nor sarcoma clear now moving to the next that is mixed tumors so what are mixed tumor so these are the these in mixed tumor the cells will be single clone of mutated cell okay they are monoclonal but they will they will acquire more genetic changes they will acquire genetic differences among themselves yeah that type of tumor is not mixed tumor one example here Suppose that type of cells has epithelial tumor component also and mesenchymal tumor component also. So this will lead to biphagic tumor. So they are the examples of biphagic tumor. Both components are present in this. And classical example of mixed tumor is pleomorphic adenoma of salivary glands. Clear? <coughs> now tumor germ cells may be may have ectodermal component, mesodermal component, endodermal component. But if all the component will come together, then it is known as tetratoma. Okay, sorry, teratoma. That is known as teratoma. If all the component will be present, that is known as teratoma. Now the next term is hematoma okay so it is basically they are normal tissue mass they are normal tissue mass at normal site so hematoma is just normal tissue mass at normal site okay previously it was considered to be development malformation they were considered as developmental mal malformation but now they are considered to be benign tumor okay then there have been some clonal abnormalities have been discovered among the cells of the tissue clear so hematoma is the normal tissue mass at normal site yeah suppose lung lung bronchi bronchi has cartilage okay and uh, a disorganized mass of cartilage carrying same clonal abnormalities that is in lung parenchyma that will be known as pulmonary hematoma okay or pulmonary chondroma because of cartilage so tissue is cartilage present in the same place bronchi okay but there are abnormalities within that cells that will be known as hematoma the next one is choristoma so they are normal looking tissue at abnormal site 
they are normal looking cell at abnormal side but they are not a tumor magnet these are the example of tumor hematoma is tumor but they are not the tumor they are basically developmental abnormality example is pancreatic tissue which is found in gastric mucosa mucosa and choristoma also called as ectopic or heterotopic now the next term is dysplasia so dysplasia is this means disorder plasia means growth and it is reversible it is occurring due to response of any stimulus it is usually seen in dysplasia is usually observed in epithelial tissue okay and in this loss of uniform uniformity at cellular level will occur okay cell cells do not look same and in the dysplasia loss of architectural orientation at tissue level will be seen clear so if cells are not looking same then it is getting pleomorphism that is many morphologies clear so this is normal cell you are seeing in form cells architecture is same clear and here this is mitotic figure mitotic figure as figures are present now if there is dysplasia then you see dysplasia the architecture is disorganized okay here you see nuclear polymorphism you are seeing nuclear polymorphism different types of nucleus hyperchromatic nuclei will be there and in this nucleus cytoplasmic ratio will increase because nuclear size has been increased and mitotic figures in all layer see usually mitotic figures will be present in this first layer but here mitotic figures are present in all layers will be present in all layers clear so the four characteristic that is nuclear polymorphism hyperchromatic nuclei nuclear cytoplasmic ratio increases and mitotic figures in all layers now dysplasia if full thickness if full if all the layers will undergo dysplasia then it is known as carcinoma in situ which is a pre-invasive condition this carcinoma in situ is pre-invasive condition now the dys dysplasia often occurs in metaplastic epithelium but not all uh, again repeating dysplasia often lead to often occurs in metaplastic epithelium but not all metaplasia lead to dysplasia okay dysplasia leads to metaplasia but not all metaplasia leads to dysplasia we have discussed metaplasia means change in one form of cell to another form so dysplasia involves metaplasia but all metaplasia does not involve dysplasia the next one is anaplasia so this was your dysplasia disorder organization this is anaplasia this is loss of differentiation anaplasia is loss of differentiation what a differentiation means it is extent to which a tumor cell resembles original cells functionally and structurally clear this is differentiation so this property is lost in case of anaplasia now two condition if there is more resemblance to the original cell then i will say that they are well differentiated clear mind it that this is the definition of differentiation so if they are well differentiated means they are more resembling to the normal cell if they are if there is no resemblance means they are undifferentiated means they are not resembling to the original cells clear so well differentiated well in well differentiated comes your benign tumor and in poorly or undifferentiated come your malignancy and this is high grade where this is low grade malignancy benign tumor malignancy is low grade because here the uh, cells the tumor cells is uh, representing is resembling to your original cells but in this malignancy high grade malignancy that is not resembling too much clear now this is one example yes one this is a normal cell okay uniform nuclei is present nucleus cytoplasmic ratio is 1 to 4 or 1 to 6 this is best membrane this is normal mitotic figures this is the normal cell having 2 n cell now if there is anaplasia then what will happen the first one is membrane basement membrane rupture okay or invasion will occur so this is see basement membrane rupture has been occur and cells come outside the next one is aneuploidy means abnormal mitotic figure okay you yes, see abnormal mitotic figure is formed aneuploidy condition is will be seen here clear yeah. nuclear cytoplasmic ratio will be one is to one means nuclear size will increase nuclear size has been increased pleomorphic nucleus will be there you are seeing pleomorphic nuclei will be there pleomorphic nuclei will be there now third characteristic that is bizarre multiple nuclei multiple nuclei you are seeing here okay hyperchromism will be there so these are the characteristic okay if there is anaplasia there's a malignancy and and this anaplasia okay anaplasia that is involves in malignancy okay so this type of structure will be seen clear now anaplasia and dysplasia differ as dysplasia is reversible not anaplasia and in anaplasia we get abnormal mitotic figure in anaplasia we get abnormal mitotic figure that is nuploidy is seen in anaplasia now coming to the differences between benign and malignant so differentiation so they are well differentiated they may be well differentiated or poor differentiated invasion in benign invasion is absent malignant present metastasis absent in benign present may be present in malignant size usually small in benign and usually larger than benign growth rate slow fast might be figures usually normal looking in benign but here atypical or tripolar multipolar boundaries in benign well demarcated but in malignant poorly demarcated ill defined clear areas of hemorrhages and necrosis usually absent in benign but here malignant growing okay so they will run out of blood supply okay if there is run out of, if there is deficiency of blood supply that will cause hypoxia hypoxia cause ischemic necrosis okay and new new angiogenesis new angiogenesis in this blood vessels will be leaky okay so that can cause edema as further sign now we will discuss metastasis that is the secondaries okay metastasis are also known as secondaries 
Now, the spread of tumor to sites that are physically discontinuous with the primary tumor is known as metastasis. Types of metastasis: so regional lymph node metastasis, that is lymphatic spread; distant metastasis, that is usually hematogenous spread through blood vessels. Okay. All malignancy can potentially metastasize. Okay. Except gliomas and basal cell sarcoma. These two are exception, uh, and all malignancy can potentially metastasize except just gliomas and basal cell sarcoma. Now, pathway of spread. So, first pathway is seeding of body cavities and surfaces. Most commonly, body cavities that is peritoneal cavity. Clear. So, most commonly is peritoneal. And uh, there is two example here: ovarian malignancy and appendical malignancy. And if the if in these two malignancy, if mucin amount will increase, okay, then they may enter to the body cavity, peritoneum. Then it will known as pseudo myxoma peritonei. Clear. The next one is lymphatic spread. One point important that tumors do not have functional lymphatics themselves. Mind it, tumors do not have functional lymphatic themselves, but tumor margins with normal tissue having lymphatics. Okay, tumor margins with normal tissue having lymphatics, or there is considerable interaction between lymphatic and blood vessels. So these two, these two helps in lymphatic spread of the tumor. Tumor actually do not have functional lymphatic, but helping by taking help with uh, help with the adjacent tissues, lymphatics, or interaction of the lymphatic and blood vessels. Now pattern of lymph node involvement follows the usual lymphatic drainage route of organ involved. Okay, pattern of lymph node involvement will follow the usual, the same lymphatic drainage route of the organ involved in normal conditions. Okay, we have, we have shown with a diagram. This is outer upper quadrant. This is lower upper quadrant. This outer upper quadrant drain into axillary nodes. Clear. Yeah. And this is the inner lower quadrant. One important point that uh, first. That uh, you will. This is the up, outer upper quadrant. This is the most common site of breast cancer. This is the most common site of breast cancer. And this inner lower quadrant will be the least common site of breast cancer. Okay. Yeah. And from here, drain into this. And from lower quadrant, draining will be to internal memory nodes. Okay. Yeah. So this is very important. Sometimes reactive inflammation or radiation therapy can obliterate or lymphatic channels. Okay. Sometimes suppose any reactive inflammation or radiation therapy can uh, block your obliterate your lymphatic channels. So, okay. So suppose. This axillary lymph nodes drainage drainage from outer upper quadrant will be blocked towards this axillary node. Then this will drain into internal memory nodes. Okay, so you you have to check both internal memory nodes and axillary nodes before uh, reaching to the conclusion. So sometimes reactive inflammation or radiation therapy can obliterate lymphatic channels. Then it will lead to bypass of expected route of lymphatic involvement. Can I can okay? This will bypass expected route of lymphatic involvement, and this is known as skip metastasis. Clear? Yeah. Now coming to the sentinel lymph node. So this is the first lymph node in a regional lymphatic. Basin that receive drainage from the primary tumor. So this is sentinel also known as guard. Okay, it's meaning. So this is the first lymph node in regional lymphatic basin that receives drainage from the primary tumor. Clear? Yeah. So this is shown. This is your skin. This is your tumor. This is the lymphatic channels. Here shown lymph nodes, and this is the first lymph node to which your lymphatic first reaches from the tumor cell to first lymph node. That is known as lymph sentinel. Okay. And we put a dye that is radioactive or methylene blue. Okay. And after putting dye, the first lymph node is excised. Okay. And examined. We Uh, we will excise lymph nodes and examine it. So excise and examine it. Tumors not metastasize to sentinel node. It it means we require conservative surgical approach because tumor are not metastasizing. If tumor has spread to sentinel node, it means tumor has uh, spreading to the body parts. So we need radical and aggressive surgical approach. In this case, we need conservative surgical approach. Clear? Yeah? Now sentinel lymph node biopsy is seen in and done in breast carcinoma, melanoma, penile carcinoma, vulvar carcinoma. Endometrial carcinoma and colon carcinoma. Clear. Coming to the third, that is hematogenous spread. So arteries are not that easily penetrable, but venous drainage system are quite commonly involved here. Clear. So portal for liver, cavel for lungs, and paravertebral in the case of vertebral column. Clear. Now four most common tumors to involve bones at secondary are prostate carcinoma, breast carcinoma, thyroid carcinoma, and renal cell carcinoma. Clear. Most common cancer in women in India involved by breast carcinoma. Most common cancer in men in India involved by lung carcinoma. And most common cause of cancer mortality in women, India and worldwide. Breast. Most common cause of cancer mortality in men in India, lung and worldwide lung. Clear. So this is all about your first part of nucleus.